So ever since the 2018 iPad Pro release, and then also when iPadOS finally split up into its own OS from iOS into iPadOS 13, I've been a huge advocate of the fact that the iPad Pro has enough hardware and sheer force and power to really be your one and only computer. Now back in 2018, when that iPad did release, there were still some limitations and a lot of workarounds that needed to be done in order to make your iPad a computer. For instance, the secondary monitor support was very lacking, everything was still just mirrored, applications didn't run perfectly compared to the counterparts on macOS and things of that nature. But now with iPadOS 16.2 and the ability to use an external display the way we're supposed to use an external display, the iPad Pro can fully be your computer, and I'm gonna show you guys how I personally use the iPad Pro because yes, there are instances where the iPad Pro still needs to be a tablet for me when I'm editing pictures and thumbnails and using the Apple Pencil, but a lot of the time I use it in this computer mode with iPadOS, Stage Manager, and also that secondary monitor support. So that's what I wanna do in this video, show you my workflow, show you exactly how I use them because again, the iPad Pro is a tablet and a touch interface first, so being able to use it as a tablet but still use it as a computer at the same exact time is a big, big benefit that people are kind of skipping over. So without further ado, let's talk about my iPad Pro setup and let's get right into it. So before we get started, I did want to reiterate that Stage Manager and Secondary Monitor Support are two different capabilities and two different feature sets. A lot of people use them interchangeably, but just so you are aware, Stage Manager is the ability to use those floating windows and having up the four applications open at one time natively on the actual iPad itself, versus secondary monitor support is that extension of the iPad OS onto a secondary monitor without mirroring the actual display. Now for Stage Manager, you can use a 2018 iPad Pro or newer, so you have to have the A12X, the A12Z, or the M1 powered iPads, and then to get secondary monitor support, you need an M-powered iPad to really use that capability at all. If you use a 2018 iPad Pro, it's still going to mirror your display even with Stage Manager. So you need an M1 iPad Pro, M2 iPad Pro, or an M1 iPad Air in order to make this happen. And then another thing to be fully aware about with secondary monitor support, you will need at least and at a minimum an actual Bluetooth mouse connected to your iPad in order for this to take place. If you just connect your M1 iPad Pro to an external display, you will still get the mirror display that we all love so very much. You will need at least a Bluetooth keyboard or a Bluetooth mouse in order to actually kind of turn on or for iPadOS to recognize that you're trying to use that secondary monitor support. If not, for some reason, Apple doesn't let you toggle it off and on. You need to have that peripheral kind of ready to go, or you can just use a magic keyboard and it'll be automatically recognized. It's a kind of a weird situation, but in order for this to happen, you need to have a Bluetooth peripheral or the magic keyboard to get it going. And then to answer any and all questions in terms of connectivity to a secondary display, as long as you have those peripherals ready to go, you can use pretty much any dock, any dongle, you can use any form of video out. So VGA, DisplayPort, HDMI, USB-C, Thunderbolt, whatever the case may be, as long as you have those peripherals or you have a magic keyboard and you have the corresponding dongle or hub, then you can use any cable to get a actual video out and use the secondary monitor support the way it's supposed to be intended to use as an extended display and not just a mirror display. So now that we have all that stuff out of the way and you are aware of exactly what you need to get this going, I know it's a lot of stuff, but once you have everything ready to go, then it's gonna be a seamless experience because the latest version of iPadOS that we're on on 16.3.1 has been extremely stable with extended monitor support and I absolutely love it for my workflow. So for my specific setup, what I have right here, and like I said, you can use any dongle, any USB-C hub in order to get this to work. I'm actually personally using the new seven in one pluggable kind of dock and stand at the same time. Now the reason why I'm opting to use a stand versus the Magic Keyboard because if you just wanna use your iPad as a computer, the Magic Keyboard is a great solution. I love the Magic Keyboard. I tell people that if you're gonna pick one accessory to get with the actual iPad Pro or any iPad, get the Magic Keyboard because it transforms the way that you interact with your iPad and it transforms the actual product that your iPad is. It goes from a tablet to an actual computer, a full-fledged computer in my opinion. But the reason I'm going with this pluggable solution is because I wanted a situation, especially at my desk, where I could still use the iPad as a tablet the way that it was intended to be used as a touch-first interface with Apple Pencil 2 support and being able to kind of manipulate stuff on that end with the iPad OS tablet still in tablet mode, but then also be able to plug in and be, use, be able to use the extended monitor as a computer-like solution whenever I need to. With floating windows, being able to have multiple windows open at the same time, and being able to have multiple applications running without me needing to actually go down to the iPad and interact with the iPad at all. So it's almost as if I'm running iPadOS on the iPad as a tablet the way I wanted it to be, and then there's some sort of secondary experience or a secondary OS version of iPadOS that's running 
on the external monitor, right? So in the external monitor, you get that stage manager interface while using the entirety of the display, which I'm using a 4K 27 inch display by A-Logic. I'll link down below if you guys do wanna check that out. But I do recommend going with a 4K monitor to make sure your scaling is all good to go. But if you have a 1080p monitor, an ultra wide monitor, an ultra tall monitor, whatever the case may be, extended monitor support is gonna scale correctly for the most part and I haven't had any issues. I even used a 1080p 44 inch monitor at one point if you guys wanna check that video out and it worked flawlessly even when I was running 16.0 beta back then. But that's how I have it set up. So I have my Satechi X1 Slim keyboard, I have my Logitech Anywhere S2 mouse that I have connected via Bluetooth to the iPad and then on the dock and stand side, I wanted, like I said, a way to actually hinge down the iPad down to a level or to an angle where I can use Apple Pencil comfortably. So again, that 10 to 15 degree viewing angle on the iPad. So the iPad to me at the desk is in tablet mode at all times. Stage manager is never turned on. If I want two apps at the same time, I'm using the classic split view, but whenever I need that computer-like experience, then I grab the mouse, the keyboard, and then I go up to that secondary display to use whatever windows or applications that needed to be used. So I have the iPad on the pluggable stand, connect that in there, and then voila, you have this like two-in-one desktop tablet, super versatile solution to help you get whatever task you need done, no matter what the situation, what the vertical, what the actual copy is, whether it is Microsoft applications, video editing applications, coding applications, you know, Swift UI, whatever the case may be, this kind of solution and this setup will be enough of a solution for 99% of people in my personal opinion. So let me quickly walk you through my creative workflow when creating one of these videos and then how I edit it and get everything packaged up and ready to go on YouTube with this setup behind me. So the first things first, you know, I record my A roll, I record my B roll, I make sure that everything that I need from a video perspective is ready to go. So then I airdrop everything to the iPad. Everything gets airdropped, it takes a little while depending on how big my files are and how long the A roll is. But once I get it airdropped onto my iPad, then it's just like any other kind of cool computer experience. What I love about iPad OS 16 and kind of the functionality of the iPad Pro is that yes, sometimes to get from point A to point B, it takes an additional step or two, although now these days it's kind of one-to-one -one when comparing it to Mac OS applications, but it does sometimes take a little bit longer to get from point A to point B, but it's just a lot more fun overall. So you don't really feel the, the lack of efficiency for those people that are very efficient on everything they do. There's a little bit of a lack of efficiency, but not to the point where it's two, three, four X as long to get something done. Maybe it takes about 1.2 times as long to get something done. But once I airdrop everything over to the iPad Pro, so then I go into the editing portion of my workflow. So I get LumaFusion out, depending on what I'm doing, I either have it on the actual iPad itself on the bottom, or I have it on the external display. For the most part, I do use it on the external display. And then on the bottom, I'll have no what's relevant to the actual video. Maybe I have my voice memos app open, ready to go. And one thing to consider is that when you do use secondary monitor support, one of the limitations is that it always by default will route all the audio, especially if you're using either HDMI or USB-C, it's gonna route all the audio to the external display. So if your external display does not have great audio or doesn't have any audio at all, then unfortunately you will not be able to hear anything. So what I do is I personally use AirPods Pro to edit everything, so keep that in mind when you're editing video to make sure you get the correct sound, but it will default to your monitor speaker, so if you have a great set of monitor speakers, by all means use those. And then once I get that all edited and ready to go and I need to export that out and render it out, then this is where the beauty of Stage Manager and iPad OS 16 and the secondary monitor support helps out from an efficiency standpoint. Prior to this, whenever I would use LumaFusion, I would need to stay on the LumaFusion app to export that file, which again, would be a waste of time. Most of the time, what I like to do now is export it on the external display, so it's exporting in real time, and then go to Affinity Photo and start editing my thumbnail. And then once that's all packaged and done, then I open up Safari or I open up the YouTube Studio app and finish all the administrative work that goes with uploading a YouTube video like descriptions, thumbnail, you know, time of day, when I want to schedule, things of that nature. And then once it's done, then I'm good to go. So that is the beauty of it, right? You have the perfect solution where you can use your iPad as a tablet when you need it to be a tablet on the actual desk itself. And then when you need the computer version of iPad OS, you just go to that secondary monitor, use your keyboard and mouse setup, and you're good to go. I have personally been absolutely in love with this setup because like I said, it just makes you feel like you're using two computers in one, even though your iPad is powering everything. And now the iPad that I'm using is the baseline version of the M1 iPad Pro. So I don't even have the M2 iPad Pro. I don't have the M1 or M2 iPad Pro that has 16 gigs of RAM. I'm only using eight gigs of RAM. And there hasn't been a single time where this stutters. Oh, and on top of that, I'm using a beta software. So I'm on 16.4 beta, and it's been working flawlessly with zero issues, zero hiccups, zero spring resets, zero need to kind of leave an application or quit out of it. Everything just works as it's intended, and it's become extremely stable to the point where it's fully recommendable to be able to use this as your one and only computer setup. 
One more thing that I will recommend if you have the budget for it, get yourself an Apple trackpad. The reason I say get yourself an Apple trackpad is because the gesture-based controls in iPadOS are very important to how you interact with the iPad itself, and the only other way to get that aside from the Magic Keyboard and the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard is to use the Magic Trackpad. I have not found a third-party trackpad that's able to replicate what Apple can do with their personal trackpad and their native trackpad on the Magic Keyboard. It's just a lot more seamless, it's easy to use. I know it's a little bit pricey, but if you have the budget for it to include in this setup, I do recommend it because it allows you to navigate iPadOS a lot easier than just with a point and click mouse. So having the trackpad, the keyboard, and the point and click mouse is that perfect combo to use your iPad as your main computer with a secondary display and using your iPad as a tablet with the Apple Pencil and still being able to use the point and click mouse on the iPad itself whenever you need to. So that is the way that I use this setup and I'm very happy that I found this because it just makes it a lot more fun to get everything that I need to get done and get it done in a timely basis because the iPad to me has been my favorite tech product I think of all time. When it came out in 2018, I saw this thing and I was like, Apple is five to 10 years ahead of everybody else in the tablet game because this hardware is so powerful, they just need to get the software caught up and we're getting to that point. I know some people are against Stage Manager, some people think Stage Manager and extended monitor support are kind of gimmicky, they're not perfect, especially compared to Mac OS and Windows 11, but again, it's just a learning curve that you have to go through and if you wanna make that attempt to make the iPad your computer, it 100% can be your computer solution moving forward. Now, would I recommend it from a functionality standpoint and from an experience standpoint? Yeah, I would definitely recommend this to a lot of people to at least give it a try. Like, try to see if the iPad can be your computer. But when it comes to a cost perspective, that's where it gets a little bit icky because the iPad Pro is pretty expensive, right? If you wanna get a maybe 512 gig iPad Pro, maybe if you want data, for the iPad itself, you're now looking at 15, 16, almost $2,000 for a tablet when you think about it. And that doesn't include any peripherals. So if you want to get the trackpad, that's 120. The keyboard, I mean, I use one by Satechi that's around 60 or 70. Great keyboard, link it below. And then if you want to get a mouse, you need 50 to 100 to 120 dollars, depending on what mouse you want to get. 4K monitors, anywhere from 500 to 1500. You know, all this stuff kind of starts to add up if you want to use your iPad as your main computer, versus you can go and spend thousand dollars on a MacBook Air that has a trackpad, keyboard, screen the same M1 or M2 chip and you'll be good to go or $1,200 for the M2 version of the MacBook Air and it's all in a package that's ready to use right away. So from a cost perspective, it is pretty cost prohibitive and maybe Apple put it that way so it doesn't cannibalize the rest of the MacBook Air lineup because if you were to put these side by side and you get all the keyboard and trackpad functionality and product and accessories at that same $1,200 price point, then it'd be a different story. I think a lot more people would gravitate to the iPad Pro. But if you wanna have a setup like this, you're gonna end up spending two to $3,000 over time. Now, I didn't do this all overnight. It was an overtime kind of graduation of all the things that I wanted to purchase for the iPad Pro to make it my one and only computer. But again, for a lot of people, it could be cost prohibitive, especially if you're looking to dive in all at once with everything that you need. But I will say, once you dive in, you probably will not regret it. I'm not, I have not regretted it. I love the iPad Pro, like I mentioned multiple times. It's my main computer. I use it for thumbnail editing, video editing, word processing, Excel, pages, everything that you could think of, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, Netflix, whatever the case may be, I'm going to my iPad 9.9 .9 out of 10 times first before going to a MacBook Air or even my iPhone for that matter. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. I just wanted to shed some light on this new kind of setup that I have going on. Use whatever you have around you, right? Any dongle will work, any monitor will work, any stand will work. I just kind of wanted to show you what this kind of divvy of being able to use your iPad still as a tablet while being plugged into a secondary monitor and using your iPad as a computer all at the same time running the same OS with zero hiccups in functionality, in effectiveness, and in efficiencies overall. But that's gonna do it for this video. Leave some comments down below of what you think about this situation and if there's anything else on the market like this right now. I know we have Samsung DeX with the Tab S9 or S8 or the S8 Ultra, whatever it's called now. I'm not 100% sure of what the function is when you plug it into DeX, if you can still use a tablet as a tablet. Is this something that you would do if the cost wasn't a prohibitive factor of doing this setup? Would you pick an iPad over a MacBook Air if they were the same exact price for the same functionality? All things that I'm curious to discuss in the comments down below. And also stay tuned because I'm gonna have a full walkthrough of Stage Manager and all the ins and outs of Stage Manager and Extended Monitor support to show you guys everything that it can do, but then also if there's any limitations or anything that you gotta get used to overall, like those floating windows. Because those floating windows are a little bit tricky sometimes if you don't know what you're doing. But that's gonna do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. I know this is a long one, so thank you for bearing with me. But if you guys wanna watch more Mac OS, iPad OS, or iOS videos, click on one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.